Hey everybody, Ryan Jackson here. I hope you're having a wonderful day. So we've got kind of a big deal to talk about today in Article 310. And uh, those of you guys that are kind of deep in the code world might know exactly where I'm going with this already. Uh, Article 310's had some controversial stuff over the last few editions of the code. And I think it's uh, officially the end of the debate. So let's take a look at what happened here in Article 310, Conductors for General Wiring, 310.5. Smaller sizes of copper and copper clad aluminum conductors are now allowed for general applications. All right, so the minimum size of conductors is now 16 gauge copper, 14 gauge copper clad aluminum, or 12 gauge aluminum, unless allowed elsewhere in the code. And let's just do the unless allowed elsewhere part. So like control conductors, right? Those can be smaller fixture wires, things like that. So this is your general requirement for like branch circuit conductors. Minimum size is now 16 copper, 14 gauge copper clad, or 12 gauge aluminum. So the 12 gauge aluminum part didn't change. Um, I don't think I've ever seen 12 gauge aluminum in a modern installation, not that I can think of, uh, but the 16 gauge copper and 14 gauge copper clad is definitely new. So if you've been following along, you know that there are changes in article 210 for 10 amp circuits. And that subject has been, controversial to some but not too many right so we made the change in 210.22 i think um that says listen 10 amp branch circuits are allowed only for lighting and then also for exhaust fans in dwelling units the question always was what size wire can you use right because that was added in the 2023 but what was not added was this change so you still had to use 14 gauge copper if you wanted to use a 10 amp branch circuit, right? 14 gauge copper, 12 gauge copper clad aluminum. They've been trying to introduce 16 gauge copper and 14 gauge copper clad uh, ever since I believe the 2020 edition, definitely the 2023 and definitely the 2026. And it was always a big debate. And I think it probably should have been a big debate. This needs to be taken extraordinarily seriously. And what I always say on this rule is this, I'm on two code making panels, right? I'm on panel three and panel 17. And I've written, I don't even know how many code changes over the decades. I mean, I've several hundred, right? But here's the thing. I've screwed up the code. I, I have written code rules that were bad. And three years later, we had to go back and fix them, right? Guilty as charged. I mean, I, I have a pretty good success rate on, on writing code, but I'm not perfect. Nobody is. But here's the thing. Usually when we screw something up in the code, Three years later, we can go back and fix it and say, yeah, that's not quite what we meant. You know, we meant to say and, not or, you know, or something like that. We meant six feet, not over six feet. Let me tell you something. If you change the minimum size wire that you can put in a building, you better be right. Because there's no fix in this if it's wrong. You know what I'm saying? If we find out that this was a bad change, we'll find out because of fire. So this is a change that they have been studying for nine years, right? There is a tremendous amount of research and studying and testing. There are volumes of test data available to the public, right? This is not, uh, this is fully transparent, right? There, there, there's nothing shady to the best of my knowledge. There's nothing shady about any of this. Um, all of the test data is there. You can get it from NFPA's website. And there are mountains of testing about 16 gauge copper and 14 gauge copper clad aluminum. Um, I think it's fine. Uh, nothing that I have read convinced me that this is a bad change. Uh, I think it's perfectly okay. Uh, if you don't want to do it, then don't do it. See if I care, right? But uh, as an electrician, know that people can you know, now use 16 gauge copper for lighting or 14 gauge copper clad for lighting. Um, a couple of things you need to be aware of. Not all devices are marked for these small of conductors, right? When we test circuit breakers and we test receptacles and switches, historically we've tested them against 14 gauge wire, right? Well, now we've got 16 gauge copper, so that termination is going to be smaller. And recently, 
uh, UL changed their product safety standard, at least in receptacles and I think in switches as well, to indicate that the devices are going to have to be marked specifically for copper clad aluminum. Uh, although I think there's a twilight date on that where it's like it's not effective for a couple more years or, or something. I don't, I, I don't remember off the top of my head. But here's the deal. Just like anything, follow instructions, right? Any termination is only as good as the person making the termination. So make sure your termination is rated for whatever you're doing with it, regardless of what size wire you're using, right? So make sure your breakers, your switches, your receptacles, your luminaires, make sure they're rated for 16 gauge copper or 14 gauge copper cloud aluminum before you start making an installation. They also added an informational note here that says, take a look at 210.20, uh, 210.23, beg your pardon, for a summary of the allowable loading of branch circuits. And 210.23, for example, uh, says, you know, hey, if the equipment is fixed in place and there's other non-fixed in place, then you've got a 50% rule. And if it's, uh, if everything is fixed in place and there is no 50% rule, if you've got portable equipment, there's an 80% rule, right? 310.23, you know, I ought to make a video of that one of these days. 310.23 is a complex code section. Uh, so they just wanted to point that out, right? Listen, go read 210.23 before you buy 10,000 feet of 14 gauge copper clad or 16 gauge copper and think you can wire whole buildings with it because you can't, right? We need to make sure we're only using it for lighting and only for exhaust fans in dwelling units. So there you go. 310.5. It was interesting watching this debate from the sideline. Uh, this went through the code making channel, or through the code making process, and then it went to an appeal on the floor, and then it went on appeal to the standards council. Uh, this thing went to, uh, you know, if, if NFPA has a version of the Supreme Court, this went to their Supreme Court, right? It went through the code making panel, then it went to the floor vote, which is kind of like an appellate court, you know, and then it went to the Supreme Court, right, the, the NFPA Standards Council. So at the end of the day, they said, listen, there's a lot of test data. It shows that it's safe. We're putting it in the code. So there you go. You don't have to love it. Doesn't matter to me if you love it or hate it. It's in the code, right? I don't have to love it or hate it. It's in the code. So there you go. That's 310.5. I'll tell you a code change I do love is the next one we're going to talk about, which is 310.14. It's another weird little loophole that's been in there for a long time that finally somebody caught and, uh, and fixed. And you know how I always love those. So be safe out there, everybody, please. And I hope you'll keep joining me on this series as we progress through Article 310. We'll see you there. Thanks.